Good morning guys, it's raining like crazy, it's cold. I got new vocals, so just a perfect day to spend it entirely in the studio and working on a new track. to work on these vocals so let's just draw it jump into it this right here is the project I'm working on at the moment the track is called fall all of these bits here on the top is kind of my instrumental the drums the piano the guitar and some effects and all of these purple bits down here are the vocals that I just got two days ago and these vocals are really amazing they are by a Scottish singer and songwriter and he did an amazing job labeling all of these tracks and doing a lot of variations, ad-libs, um, backings and layers. There are a couple of things you really always have to keep in mind working with vocals. First of all, even someone that doesn't really have to do with music will immediately hear if there's something wrong with the vocals. Every human is so used to hearing other voices that if it sounds a little bit just off or awkward, this will really focus all of the attention of the listener onto that mistake and will kind of ruin the track. So you can definitely get away with mistakes in the instrumental, but in the vocals there is really no space for any mistakes. Most of the mistakes already happen while recording. You of course need a singer that is really good, you need a decent microphone, good room acoustics and do enough takes to really get one where everything just fits perfectly. Just to give you a quick overview, let me play you the parts so that you know what I'm talking about. So first of all, the entire instrumental part consisting of the drums, the bass, piano and the guitar. As I already said, I got here a lot of tracks. I have here a main verse, then a second verse, ad-libs, possible ad-libs. He really did an amazing job with all of these parts. I have a lot of choice. But to keep this video from getting entirely confusing, I would just stick to one of the vocal tracks. I would just pick the chorus one. It's also always the first one I'm starting to work with. It's the most important part. If I get it right, everything else is a lot easier. Let me really quick play you the unedited vocals. I don't know I just keep letting us go. And now together with the instrumental. I don't know I just keep letting us go. I usually first of all apply compression just to explain really quick what it does. It basically lowers the louder parts in the voice and then makes everything loud again so at the end this results on having the quiet parts as loud as the loud ones just to get everything more uniform so that if the singer is singing something a little bit more quiet it gets to the same loudness as the rest. Most of the time I'm using the Logic Compressor it can emulate a lot of classic compressors has a lot of nice presets that are a good starting point but for this vocal I will set everything myself. So these are now my settings. I can play to you now the vocals with the compressor on top. I don't know I just keep letting us go. I can use a little bit more of gain reduction. I don't know I just keep letting us go. Here in this graph view you can exactly see what the compressor is doing. I don't know, I just keep letting us go. The gray area in the background is his original voice and the white line is kind of what the compressor is doing to it. And every time he's a little bit louder it's pressing it down to make everything almost the same loudness. Setting a compressor correctly, getting the ratio right, the knee, the attack and the release is something where you will need a whole lot more experience. It's way easier to hear what a delay is doing to vocals or reverb because you hear it immediately. 
hearing the reduction of dynamic range in a vocal with a compressor is a bit more difficult. You will need to have the right setup, the right experience to really know what you have to listen for. So if you're just starting out, go with a preset. The preset usually tells you what it's for and maybe just adjust the threshold and if it sounds wrong just go with another preset. Next up is EQing and EQing depends even more on the source material. It really depends on the voice of the singer, it depends on the key of the track, the tempo of the track, it depends on how it was recorded and with which mic. So it's really hard to give advice. There are probably just two things you can always do. One of them is applying a low cut to get rid of the low frequencies that are unwanted because the human voice can't even go that low. And you can also usually apply a little bit of high shelving and boost the high frequencies to give the vocals a little bit of air because usually these pop filters take away a bit of the high frequencies and mics are not really good in recording these higher frequencies. So to make it a bit natural again and a little bit shiny and nice, just add a little bit of top end. The key to getting the right EQing is just to try out a whole lot. I usually push it and then turn the EQing off and hear if it sounds better, if it still sounds natural. Then I push it even further and if it's too far and starts to sound awkward I just back um, down again and this way I usually get really close to what is best for the vocals. Usually I would now apply a noise gate to get rid of the noise floor but the vocals are recorded very clean or a de -esser, but the S sounds of this singer are not really sharp so I won't need that at least here in the chorus there might be some in the verse but so far everything just sounds really clean and nice. So let's get to the most fun part and probably the effect that changes the vocal the most and that is definitely putting reverb on top of it. My standard vocal reverb is here on bus number 6. It's the Valhalla Vintage Verb and I've used here a smooth plate setting with an 80s coloring and the decay is set to 1.8 seconds but I usually adjust that to the tempo of the track and also the style of the track. So let's listen to it without the reverb. I don't know why you just keep letting us go. And now with the reverb. I don't know why you just keep letting us go. And of course also with all of the other elements because it doesn't matter how the vocals sound on their own with the compression EQing and other effects it's important that it sounds good with the rest of the track. Nobody will ever hear these vocals without the rest of the instrumentals, so it doesn't matter how it sounds. Don't always just listen to the things solo, just leave them running with the mix. Do fine adjustments solo again and then again with the mix, because getting it right with the other elements is the key of making a track. So these three are the basics for vocals, putting compression on top of it, EQing and reverb, you will need that on almost all of the vocals you will ever work with. Of course there are a whole lot more effects you can put on top of vocals. It really depends on the material that you have. You can use the de noise reduction, getting rid of clicks with the pen tool. Also putting a bit of delay on top of the vocals can make them sound nice. Sometimes a ping pong delay is even more interesting. You can put distortion on top of the vocals chorus, which I really like to use, especially on the higher layers and the ad libs, just to make everything a bit more wider and use the entire dimension of the mix. I've also one more tip if you're just starting out, there is a plugin from Isotope. They have one called Nectar. I think there is now even Nectar 2 available. It's kind of one plugin that does everything that has to do with vocals you have here. A de -esser, something to get rid of the breathing, a noise gate, pitch correction, a preamp that does the levels, the loudness, and a ton of presets that are all sorted by genres and styles and are really, really good to get amazing vocals. 
editing vocals correctly is a super complex topic especially on tracks like this where the vocals make almost half of the track you will spend quite a long time getting them right also getting the levels right with the rest of the track is quite complex in the mixing stage so now for me it's time to apply all of the settings also to the other vocal tracks and adjust them even further and also applying a couple of different effects I think I will definitely use a delay on top of the main vocal and a little bit of distortion and chorus on some of the ad-libs and additional tracks Is it you? All done for today the track sounds really good so far except for one little guitar part in the track there is a lot of mistake in the recording and in the playing and as you might remember my guitar is still broken there's a string missing so taking it with me that I can go directly tomorrow morning to the repair shop That's already it from today. I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know how you like the new track. I really like it. I especially love the vocals. Can't wait to finish it and share with you the full version. With the guitar it's actually way easier to walk. It's kind of balancing out the weight of the backpack. Never mind taking everything back. This was quite exhausting.